friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the brand new Just Plain Awesome and Just Plain Awesome Sentiment Trails from Lawn Fawn. So I have stamped those images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I'm going to start with my mice and I'm going to use my favorite combo lately for mice. I really enjoy coloring them in this kind of grayish tone and I'm using W00, E70, and E71. So I'm starting with that E71 and laying in some shadows and then I blend out with the E70. And then I use the W00 for the highlight area. And I'll also use a little bit of the W00 on the belly and the inside of the ears. And I'm going to color all of my mice the same. I want them to look like they're part of a little family or a little squad. And so I'm just going to use the same exact combo, always keeping the shadows toward the back of the body and then the highlight on the lower part of the face and the belly. So I am so happy to see another set with these adorable mice. I have so much fun playing with them. I just think they're super fun to color and it's so cool to see all the different antics that they get up to in the different Lawn Fawn sets. And even though I didn't do it on this card, I think they're also really fun to mix and match from the different sets that have these guys in them. which. I've done on lots of other cards and I'm sure I will with these guys again in the future. But um, for this card, I just wanted to keep it to this set in particular. I especially love the little baby mouse that's sitting in front of his dad or mom, whatever you want it to be in the little paper airplane. I think he's super adorable. I did do a second layer on all of the mice except for the baby. I wanted the baby to be just a little bit lighter than the other guys. So I just left him with one layer, but I did go back and do a second on everybody else. And then I'm going to color in all of the noses and the ears using RV10 and RV11, just the RV11 for the noses. And then I did give everybody some rosy cheeks with both of those shades. I just used the RV11 first and then blended out the edge with the RV10 just to make them look extra cheerful. And then for the actual paper airplanes, I decided to go with some kind of creamy shades, but super pale because I didn't want them to look too dark. I still want them to look nice and light. So I'm using E50 and E51. And then I'm going to leave some white cardstock showing in certain areas to be the highlight. So starting with that E51 and just adding that in all of the creases or on the folded edges and then blending out with the E50 and then um, just letting that fade into the white cardstock. I didn't even use the colorless blender to soften it because that E50 is pretty light. So um, once it kind of dried back, it was a natural transition into that white area. I really love that guy that is folding the paper into the airplane as well. I think that's a really fun touch for this set because it just adds to the whole storytelling element of the images and that's something that I particularly love. I always have like a little story in mind for my cards as I'm building them. So I love having that element. So for the two mice that are wearing scarves, I wanted a pop of something bright since everything so far was pretty neutral. So I decided to do red. I'm using R24, R29, and R39. A little R39 where the fabric is knotted in the back and then blending that out with the R29. And then I'll use that R24 for a nice highlight. This is one of my favorite ride combos. I just love the depth that you get and also the richness from the lighter shades. I just love it. And once I am done with that, I'm just going to color in the little flight goggles using BG10 to make them look like glass. And then I'll grab a black Sakura jelly roll pen and get that going off to the side. 
And I'm going to go over the eyes of the mice that have their eyes open. I think that's a nice little touch. It makes them nice and bright, gives it a little bit of a raised texture. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to trim these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I've taken two pieces of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and cut them both down using the large stitch rectangle stackables. And then I use the slimline grassy hillside borders for one of those. And you don't have to use a slimline, but I just liked being able to have that longer die to decide exactly where I wanted my hill to be. And then I'm going to take the cloudy stencil and start blending on some Distress Oxide ink onto the larger piece to create the sky. And I'm using Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink for that. And I'm just starting on that stencil and making sure that the ink is darkest where I leave it so I get a nice crisp edge on each of those little scallops and then uh, kind of lifting up and using less pressure as I go up the panel toward the top or toward the next cloud formation so that you get that soft kind of dreamy look. And I'm going to continue turning that stencil so I get a different orientation of those clouds each time. And I ended up doing three of those in total. And then at the bottom, I always like to add a little extra ink because I feel like the bottom just looks so stark white. It doesn't match the rest of the scene. So I like to add a little extra ink at the bottom. So if any of that white area shows, it just is a little bit softer and hazier and um, just fits a little bit more seamlessly. And then I'm going to press some of that ink onto an acrylic block and add a little spritz of water to it so I can mix that up and make it more fluid. And then I will flick that all over the background with that paintbrush, just tapping it on the block so I get nice small little dots. And then I will set that aside to dry. For the grassy border, I'm going to start with some twisted citron and I'm going to put that right up at the top. I'm imagining that the sun would be kind of beating down and reflecting most on the top of the grass. So I'm going to go uh, lightest to darkest on this piece. And I'm going to bring in some mowed lawn and add that in. Make sure that I am overlapping just a little bit of that twisted citron so that I get a smoother blend between the two. I will go back and forth to smooth things out a bit, but I just want to create a nice transition between these shades. And I wanted to beef up the color down at the bottom, so I added the ink a little bit more heavily down there. It also just kind of draws out that stitching detail along the edges, makes you uh, be able to see that a little bit more. I wanted to darken that up even further, so I am going to bring in some Lucky Clover, but I'm just going to use a little bit of this. I don't want to get too heavy handed there. And then I'll go back to the mowed lawn and blend that out, and then back to the Twisted Citron to just um, make everything blend really nicely. And once I am done with that, I am also going to take some of that Lucky Clover and press that onto the block and water that down so I can do some splatter detail with this shade as well, just to make both pieces of the background look more consistent. Just adds a little bit of movement and texture to the background, which I think is nice. Then I'll set this panel aside to dry and go back to my cloud panel, which has dried now. And I'm going to stamp my sentiments on there. And this is where I'm bringing in the Just Plain Awesome Sentiment Trails. I think it's a really fun way to do your sentiment instead of just doing like a, a regular banner or stamping the sentiment down at the bottom. It's kind of fun to incorporate it into the scene. So I'm stamping that down in some VersaFine Onyx Black ink, so it'll be really nice and dark, especially since it is such a, a fine font. I want it to be really visible. And I did stamp that down twice to make sure that it was a good impression. Then I'll set that aside and pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using some Mermaid cardstock. 
And this time I am stamping in Peacock ink and again I am using the Just Plain Awesome Sentiment Trails for the inside as well. I just chose another one of the paper airplanes and the trails and the tiny sentiment that says you're so fly, which I think is really adorable. Then I'm ready to start assembling. So I'm going to add the cloudy backdrop to the front of the card and it is going to fit the entire card front because it is a standard A2 size card, four and a quarter tall by five and a half wide. And then I have popped the grassy piece up on some foam tape. So I will peel off those strips on the back and line that up with the bottom of the card, making sure it's on there nice and straight. And then I'll just press that down into place. I've also added some foam tape to the back of almost all of my images. So again, I'll just peel off those release papers and then line them up. And I'm gonna start with the two mice in the paper airplanes that are gonna go next to the sentiment trails, just to make sure that I have those in position first and then I can kind of build the scene around them. I'm gonna add this other little airplane up toward the top on that shorter trail. And then I have the mouse that is kind of running along, getting ready to launch his airplane. And so I've used um, foam tape on the part where the airplane is, which is above the grass line, and then liquid glue for the lower part. And I'm gonna add him over on the left-hand side. And then over on the right, I'm gonna have the mouse who is building the paper airplane. So I've got him kind of folding up the paper on the right hand side and then right next to him I'm going to add that last paper airplane because he's kind of um, doing all the work for everybody getting all their airplanes ready to go. And that is actually going to finish off this card. So I'm going to lift that up so you can see all of the detail and give you another peek at the inside. This was super fun and easy to put together and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. You can also hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. This video will be on the Lawn Fawn YouTube channel today as well, so if you'd like to watch it again, you can check it out over there. All of the products I use will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below, and I will also put up two extra videos in case you'd like to keep watching. Thank you guys so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.